this is the Inner Chief Podcast, episode 152. But I think the main thing, friend, is it's why you do it, it's how you do it. And keep seeing this as pure gift. It's There's no strings attached. And as I said before, do it because it's going to make you a better person in the world, a better kind of a place. And if you can do it when no one knows, nobody sees it, it's extraordinary what you will actually experience. G'day, this is the Inner Chief Podcast, episode 152, with our spiritual guru, Damien Price, on random acts of kindness, growing your sense of self, and values compromise. I'm your host, Craig Layton, and I believe that if you want more clarity, confidence, and influence at work, and ultimately to get your dream job faster, then learning from the masters coupled with consistent personal growth is instrumental. Every Thursday, I'll bring you a deep diving interview with a CEO or guru that reveals their inner secrets to success. And every Monday, I post a short, sharp mini-sode with the best advice I can muster to help you achieve your career and life goals. This is about becoming your greatest self and revealing to the world your true inner chief. Now, Chief, if you're yet to rate the episode and subscribe, I hope you'll do so soon. It helps others see the magnificent value that the chiefs and gurus on the show bring to their life and career. So make sure you hit subscribe on your podcast app now. Give it a five-star rating if you think it's worthy and leave a short review about your favorite episode. Now, Chief, are you working your tail off doing everything you can to be the best professional, but still finding perhaps you're not getting in front? And you just don't know why. You're you're not sure if it's a relationship with your boss that's costing you, maybe your routines and your processes, maybe you don't have the right network or the right skills, maybe you don't have the right track record, whatever it is, sometimes it's hard to know what exactly might be costing you a promotion. So what I've done is created the Chief Maker Career Scorecard. It's a 25 question survey that gives you a free automated report about your precise situation. It'll tell you exactly what you need to do in order to get ahead and design a roadmap for your dream job and life. As I said, it's totally free. I've automated the whole process so anybody can go and do it. Just go to chiefmaker.com.au and at the top, click Career Scorecard. In this episode, we talk with our resident spiritual guru, Damien Price. It's the third time we've had him on the show. Check out episodes 31 and 101 if you want to hear more from Pricey afterwards. Pricey is a spiritual guru and a true monk. In reality, he's a Christian brother, but he's actually spent his entire life working in schools with refugees, asylum seekers, homeless men and women. And you know what? He is just a man who walks beside people all over the planet. He's got a master's degree in counseling and pastoral guidance, and I've known him for over 25 years. He's a trusted friend, mentor, and colleague at the Universal Man. In this episode, we talk all about getting into the Christmas spirit with random acts of kindness, why RAKs are a gift received, not a gift given, growing every day in your sense of self, and recognizing when your values are being compromised and how to stay true to them under pressure. Right, let's hear from Damien Price. G'day, Chiefs. I'm here with the magical Damien Price because it's the end of the year. It is a season to be jolly and to give. And I've brought back our spiritual guru to help us heal the wounds of the year and spread some joy. So, Pricey, welcome back to the Inner Chief podcast. It's great to be back, Gregor. Pricey, I bring you back to help us bring meaning to work and uh, bring the real soul back into life when we can get caught up in all the dark tasks of day to day and forget that we are, in all essence, in a human business anyway, mate. So let's talk about a couple of concepts today. I want to talk about RAKs, which you're going to talk us all through in a minute, and we're also going to talk uh, a bit about keeping your values alive at work, particularly when they come under a bit of pressure. So... Let's talk about RAKs, as you call them, or RACs. Tell us, what are these? Mate, a random act of kindness. And, you know, one of the things that 
frustrates me at times is that we we make caring and giving into such a big thing or we box it in as being some special spiritual thing, etc. And we actually forget that the random act of kindness is just such a little thing and part of the fabric of our every single day. To me, uh, a rack, a random act of kindness, it's like a way of thinking. It becomes part of who you are. You become centred. You, you just naturally become aware of somebody else. And then that leads you to a sense uh, of giving. But you give in a way, and it's a humble way, it's a simple way, but you give in a way that the other um, is built up. It's built on the idea that in giving, we actually receive. And that's the strange thing about this. The more we have a, an other-centred way of thinking, we actually receive more. I mean, I, I worked with homeless people for 15 or 20 or so years. And if someone said to me, oh, Damien, you did so much for them, I, I actually received far more. And it's just being with them. I was gifted by them. I made fantastic friends. I was accepted. So um, a random act of kindness, it's something really, really simple. You do it because you want to do it. You do it so you don't gain a recognition for it. So it is as if you get up and you say, hey, look at me. It's not about that. And you don't do it to become famous or to get people saying, what a wonderful guy. You just do it because it's what we should be doing. A random act of kindness is your gift. And it's an extraordinary thing. When you do the simple random act of kindness, it's like a ripple on a, um, like a pond. And that rippleness spreads and spreads. And we knew to do some, some simple little thing. So it could be you look at the name badge the person's wearing and you call people by their name. You could just say, um, as a thank you. Like in the particular community of guys, which I am in, I did a load of laundry the other day. Then I had to rush out. I was running really late for a commitment. Came home about three hours or so afterwards. Someone had got that load of laundry out and hung it out on the actual line. And I remember as soon as I saw it, I felt really good. Like someone without thinking about it, had just got that load of laundry out, hung it out on the line. And no one came up to me and said to me, oh, Damien, I'm the one who did that for you. So it's extraordinary things. And, and, and it can be really, really simple. It could be like, I, I remember working in a school once and the boss of the school on, on a Sunday used to have this beautiful, beautiful garden. And every Monday morning, every member of the office staff would come in and on their desk would be a flower. There'd be a small vase there and there'd be a flower. Now, the person didn't have to do it, but the staff loved it. It was just a random act of kindness. Pricey, such a simple thing, right, that doesn't it just change the, the spirit of where you work or the way you go about work? I love what you said about you turn up with the, the other-centeredness, of focusing mm. on the other and just giving without needing to receive is there a little you know sometimes we can get caught up in the day-to-day -day though like that's you know you, you rush around in the morning mm. getting ready you, you go out the door you get to work there's there's busy kpis and you know targets you've got or projects you've got to lead do you say anything in your head to keep you focused like i, I know you're an angel and all but like <laughs> how do you how do you keep like recentering yourself on others how, how do you do that because because i think if like people talk about in any particular community, in any work situation, it'll be the actual spirit or the culture of that place. That's going to be the really powerful thing. And look, you walk into a, into a company, you walk into a school, you walk into any particular group and you can feel the sense of welcome or acceptance. You can feel a sense of focus. So... 
I, I, I just find when I am other centered, when I'm aware of the ego, and the ego loves to make life into me versus you, when I say, no, 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 let that go and just see the other as gift. And I'm other centered. And I, it might be those little things I do, it might be just the word of thank you. It could be an act. And, and, and the best acts are when no one actually, actually knows. I remember one time I was, I was working in a school. I had hosted um, a function and it went to really late. And the hall where the function was was an absolute mess. I said to myself at about 11.30 in, in the night, hey, I'll come in early tomorrow morning. I'll clean it up. Because I knew in the first lesson the next day, there was a really big meeting in, in that same you know, particular place. So I came in at about 6.30. The place was spotless. Someone who can't come in, cleaned it up. To this day, I've got no idea who, you know. Now, now that made me feel feel really, mm. really, really good. So, so what I do is I just try to become self-aware and then for my self-awareness, I try to become aware of the other. Mm. And when that happens, I become freed. The culture becomes softer. The culture becomes more of a human culture. The culture becomes focused. People want to then become a part of it. Mm. I think these, uh, these um, racks are about making people also feel a bit special. Like, oh, you, yeah. like you actually care, you know. And if you've got people in your team that are working super hard for you, often it doesn't take much just to recognise that for a little random act of kindness. It might be a... A pat on the back, I'll be taking them out for a lunch. It might be a little gift on the table and nothing. It could be a handwritten note, like the art of the handwritten note, which can take you just a few minutes but will touch someone's heart, you know. And I remember getting a letter about oh, maybe three years ago yeah, from Jim Collins, who wrote Good to Great, and mm. I, I, sent him a, I sent him a copy of my book. I just finished it. I was like, oh, wow, I'm so proud of this little thing I've done. I sent it off to him and um, he wrote me this little letter. And he said, great effort, mate. Really proud of you, you know. And this Special stuff, isn't it? Special, right? And I went, wow. Yeah. You know, like that, that'll, that'll, I'll never forget that little, that little thing that he did, you know. And I think those are the moments you can create in people's lives and they're easy. They, they, all, they can be small. Like oh, yeah. Little things. It doesn't have to be big, you know. Exactly. Small things. But I think what you mm. say there, Greg, is so true. It must be a really sincere thing. Mm. Like the very second it's about me, the very second it's about building me up, yep. the very second I'm doing it because I want to feel good, the, the other person becomes aware of it. You know, I use the term crap detector, <laughs> you know, and the person's crap detector goes off if you are condescending. Yeah. Like if you can be say, oh, great, that's a fantastic job. Mm. But, but you really aren't sincere. So when it's a really genuine, sincere thing, when you do it simply and in a humble way, when it's just totally a free gift, however small. And the examples that you gave about giving the little gift, the handwritten note, the number of times, one of the things I do now is, I'll just um, make a little note of a group of people and each day I'll try to make one phone call every single day because I've got a bit of a name that when whenever I call someone up, I'm looking for a kind of favour. Because I, because I work with refugees and homeless people and others, I'm often looking for some you, sort of help. Yeah, you got the hat out to help with some, exactly. some connections or some donations exactly. or something. Exactly. Mm. So every day again, like so, every day I try to ring someone, and it might be a family member one day and just a friend, just to say g'day. Nothing else. And you hear them on on, on the other end of the phone. So g'day there, and it's almost pricey. What do you now want? And, and they're very willing to give and that they really love love to hear from me. Sometimes it's just, g'day. I just want to say g'day. And it's amazing. Like, they then want to chat about all sorts of things. Now, they get off the phone feeling feeling really good. I get off the phone feeling, feeling really, really good. And, again, that kind of ripple effect, it just goes and goes. I remember one time um, I was working with young people down in um, S Sydney, 
and I was just absolutely tired. And I got back to my room. I'd been out in the city the whole day with these youth. I came home to my room and someone had set up a little thing next next to my bed. There was a um, there was the, a, like a little jug to make a cup of coffee or tea. There was a little plate of uh, sweets or something. And, and it wasn't so much the thing, but it was the actual thought. Someone had just said, no, I, I just want to just take as much much oh. care but i think the main thing friend is it's why you do it it's how you do it and keep seeing this as pure gift oh. it's there's no strings attached and, and 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 as i said before do it because it's going to make you a better person in the world a better kind of a place oh. and if you can do it when no one knows nobody sees it it's extraordinary what you will actually experience. This is just such a powerful thing, Pricey, such a simple but powerful thing. The Another point I want to make about this is at the moment in the world, we think human connection is a like, a comment on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Oh, yeah. And it's just not. There, There is nothing that will ever take the place of the human experience and, a, and an actual, you know, r- real-life connection with someone. And this is a way to do that, mm. like that the old days. And I actually think it's got more power than it used to have yeah. because we're all so caught up in our phones and social media. Greg, the, 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 there was a story just in, within within the last month where an Australian tourist was over in uh, Scotland and they dropped their wallet. Mm. And their wallet had cash and credit cards and all those sorts of things. About a month after this, parcel arrives in the mail, addressed to to them, there's the cult wallet and a, a note that's saying, hey, I thought you might have missed this. Have a fantastic day. And there was no name, there was no return address. Someone over in Scotland, I think it was, had picked it up, saw the actual address, put into a parcel, wrapped it up, except sent it away. All the credit cards there, all of the cash was there. Now, so th- this particular person made contact with, saw the kind of stamp for, for what part of Scotland was from, tried to make contact with with the particular person. But but the flow and effect of that mm. that particular story, fantastic stuff. Mm. Fantastic, Pricey. Well, I think because it's around the festive period, the Christmas period, mm. that's what it's all about. Let's all find a way to do a random act of kindness for some people at work and and bring it back. And you know what? Continue it on into the new year. It's just Con- such a wonderful continue way it on, of yeah. doing business. Make it, make it a part of you. And what I think we'll find is going to happen, it just becomes part of the way you do things. And after a while, um, you find yourself doing it, mm. you know, and you haven't even um, thought about it. Like, I know it sounds silly, but uh, and I'm definitely no type of a saint, but it's just a little thing like I find myself now, I look at the name tag someone's wearing, and almost every time I call them by their name mm. and the difference that that makes. Yeah. It's only I, small, but remember you, it works. I think you said that to me once about when you're getting on an aeroplane, greet the yeah, I do. The, the host as you're walking in by their name. And, mm. and I actually read an article about that after that. Mm. And so they said one of the nicest things you can do is greet us by our name when you get on the plane. Mm. And so I've started doing that. And what I've found is... They look up, look you in the eye and have the most beautiful big smile yeah. because you're the only person out of the 250 people on the planet that greeted them by their name. Yeah. It's such a simple little thing. Yeah. Um, so that, you know, that's a wonderful little example of a random act of kindness that you probably never consider. In fact, I'd never really considered it. I'd just say, hi, how are you? Mm. Now you add the name and it makes a difference. Yeah, mm. sure does. Right, I achieved small from Pricey in a minute. Now, listen, two weeks ago in episode 149 of The Inner Chief, we spoke with Josh Ellis, Editor-in-Chief of Success Magazine, on learning from other great chiefs, getting ahead quickly, and keeping it simple. Here's what Josh had to say about what success means to him. I think that my vision of what we try to do is help people understand that success can look like many different things for many different people, uh, and ultimately... The only thing that matters is how you feel about yourself. Yeah. And so it's not it's not a certain number of commas on your bank account or what kind of car you drive or anything like that. It's it's you know, we we all live in the space between our ears. This this is how we feel about ourselves, the way we perceive the world, the way we perceive ourselves. 
the most important thing. You can listen to that cracking episode with Josh and all the other great interviews with our chiefs and gurus by going to the back catalogue at chiefmaker.com forward slash podcast. All right, Chiefs, let's get back to our spiritual guru, Damien Price. All right, Pricey, topic number two. Look, every now and then at work, we find that there, something happens, like a, a boss does something, a peer or the organisation you work for does something and you feel like your values have, are in conflict. This is often or often can be the straw that breaks the camel's back mm. for a lot of people. It can do a lot of stress. It can certainly take all the all the meaning out of work and, and make people not want to work for an organisation anymore or for a boss anymore. How do you know when your values have been conf- conflicted? And, and when you know, what do you do about it? You know, Greg, th- this particular topic is one that we end up talking about so many times. And the number of times I've listened to your inner chief and so many of your chiefs refer to this in all, all, all types of ways. But I think the two key things here are we've got to, if we're going to be a chief, we've got to be a really aware chief. I think one of the keys of life is to grow every day in your awareness of your own actual self. And the awareness is around your particular ego. The awareness is about what fires you up, what annoys you, just to grow in that sense of sense of self. And when you are in that particular mode, you get a gut feeling. And when your gut feeling feels heavy, confused, when you just get a kind of, uh-uh, you know, it just doesn't feel right. Or angry, and, even. yeah, yeah, angry, mm. and, you, and and kind of you're feeling uh, caught, you're feeling trapped, mm. you're feeling mm. so compromised, and your gut saying there's something which is not right here, and and see our danger is that we're such busy, busy um, as people, and we live in a f- world which is fast, and we're going from meeting to meeting, phone call to phone call. We don't get the space to hear underneath. And underneath is that little feeling of awkwardness, of frustration, the feeling which says something is not actually right here. Now, when you find the time to then slow down, to then sit, and your particular way would be uh, you go for a run, you go to the gym, Uh, you meditate, whatever your way is, when you do those things, you become aware of the gut feeling, you become aware of the awkward feeling. And then when you sit with that, invariably there will be a wisdom there. And again, that wisdom will almost always say that your core values are being compromised here. Now, one of the things I found, um, and I think this is a really difficult thing we can often say look oh, my my actual values are a b c d e f g but i think a great exercise is to sit down and write down 15 20 like i really value this i really value this i really value this and when you get a great big list sit with them and keep cutting them down until you get to two Two only. What are the two values which are at your core, which make you, you? The two things that you will not compromise. Now, one of mine is dignity. I am passionate about the actual dignity of every human being. Now, that value I got from from my wonderful dad. Like, I remember growing up and my dad had... My dad did it tough. My dad had mental illness at times. At times he was, you know, um, he struggled with schizophrenia and, and things. But my dad was an extraordinarily humble man. And I remember he treated everyone who came near him as if they were, you know, like um, a, a particular king. He, he, like it would be um, any guy who came into the shop and might have been some homeless guy. It did not actually matter. Every person called them by their name and treated them in the most beautiful, beautiful way. So I suppose that value became part of me. And so now when I'm working in my day to day, 
and that value gets compromised. My gut feeling goes, "Uh uh-uh, there's something wrong here. And when I stop, and then I can't reflect, and I say, yeah, I'm feeling uncomfortable, I'm feeling trapped, I'm feeling caught, I'm feeling angry, whatever the thing is, and almost every time I'll come back to my core values are being compromised here. So what do you do then? When they're being compromised on a day-to-day basis or something big has happened, what do you do? Okay, so I think naming those two values for yourself. So for my case, it's dignity and my other ones, authenticity. I've got to be real and I've got to be a sense of the dignity. Now, when I've listened, I've then got to sit down and say, okay, how can I act authentically here? So what I now do is I became I become clear. This is my particular value. I then write down, why is my value clashing here? What's going on so that I'm feeling caught, trapped? What's going on so I'm feeling this really yucky kind of feeling? Then I go to my particular boss, my line manager, whichever the person is that's engaging with me that is leading me to feel this particular way. And then I simply say, I'm feeling really caught here I'm uncomfortable feeling here because and I frame the example in the context of my particular values and and it becomes me I say I, I I'm feeling this it is an I statement and I try to do it in a way which doesn't push them into a corner so I don't have a sense of blame. It isn't about me winning and they, they then have to actually lose. I try to just be clear and simple. And I frame it in terms of my values feeling a compromise. And I try to brainstorm with them. Can we look at it this in a different way? Can we gain a win-win here? Can we reframe this? So it's not win and lose. Can we reframe this so dignity is really respected here? Can I reframe this so I feel authentic and the the other person does too? And I try to do it in, you know, that old thing, if you want to be understood, seek to understand. So part of it is as I engage in this, I at first really listen to understand them, really listen to understand as deeply as I can, where are they coming from? I then try to then say, to kind of reframe my thing in terms of dignity and authenticity, and then I try to seek a win and a win. So I try to create a space mm. where I disarm, mm. where we can gain a sense of safe, safe space, where I build up a trust. Now, now, what I've just said is the ideal as hard, hard work. That was going to be my question. That, that, like, I see how that would play out with someone who is willing to come to the table mm. and maybe admit their fault and show some authentic, personal authenticity. Okay, yeah, maybe, maybe you're right. You know, and by seeking to understand and building that trust. You know, a, th- a good percentage of the population are going to come and sit with you and go, okay, we can work through this and find a win-win. When the thing happens that that doesn't happen, mm. uh, when the thing happens that makes you feel so compromised, you find it hard to even have that conversation. Like in, you know, <laughs> you're digging mm. deep into your well of, of goodwill and you're like, mm. that person does not deserve mm. for me to now come and do seek to understand, right? Um, this often happens, you know, in, in, in not just at work, but at home or with family. If there's something that's been going on for a long time, you know, and you feel like your values are being conflicted there or compromised there, what do you do then? Like, mm. is it is there is there a time when you've got to say, well, perhaps distance is best for the time being, and come back again later? Like, how do you mm. process that? Yeah, Greg. Look, the the, the question you're asking is. A beautiful one. And it's a journey one. It, it's like there isn't a simple, easy fix. I'm thinking of, there's a guy called Wayne Bennett who's a 
rugby league coach and Bennett had a book, Don't Die With The Music, inside you. And in Bennett's book, he quoted a poem by a guy called Dale Morrow, I think, and it's The Man In The Glass, referring to the man staring back at you in the actual mirror. He says, he's the one you must actually please. Can you look at the man in the mirror, at the person in the mirror? Can you live with him? Because ultimately, this this is about you. Can you live with your own sense of actual self? And you, and we've got that famous poem by Robert Frost. You know, the the the, the, the road less mm. so travelled. Yeah, two roads diverged in the wood, and I took the one less so travelled by, and that made it the difference. Now, the one less travelled by is often a lonely a road. Because you might come to a space where you say, I can't continue here and be authentic to me. I can't stay in this situation and be authentic to me. And that can be a really hard space. It can be a lonely kind of a space. Because because you're going to have voices. There are going to be voices saying to you, oh, give in. Voices and it doesn't really kind of matter. Wait it out. Yeah, wait another it, month. It'll be okay. Yeah. All these sort of things, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. those voices. And and, and I, I I actually was in a situation about a year ago where I was accused of something, and I was asked would I sign a letter of a apology, and it was a formal thing and it was a legal thing, and I got to a space where I said no, I can't sign that. I can't authentically sign it. Mm. Now that was, and I had so much pressure on me. People say, oh, Damien, you just got to sign it and you get on with life. Mm. And Carl, I end up saying no. So so again, the There's voices. There's a bravery there, right? Oh, yeah. There's a but, bravery. But, but Greg, sure, it does take courage, but it can be a lonely space. And the pressure to uh, compromise, to so give in, those sorts of pressures. But the danger is every time you give in, you lose a little bit of your sense of self. You become part of the actual pack, you know. And while the the friends can be good and your peers who, are, who mm. share the values with you are good, but when you lose yourself in the pack, you the world loses something really kind of special. So I think in those sorts of spaces... For me, it's moments of quiet, of stillness, deep, deep awareness. Then I listen. And I listen because my ego is going to be saying, you know, win, win, win. You've got to win. But you've got to have a space of clarity where the ego becomes quiet. And do I really believe this? Do I hold it deeply? Is it so authentically me? Now, in that space, you simply... But in a humble way, it's not, I'm right, you are actually wrong. You just simply, gently say, hey, to be authentic to me, I've got to walk away from this. The beautiful thing is people of authenticity will understand. There's our, our Kiwi, our New Zealand brothers and sisters have got a word mana. Mana means integrity. Mana, mana means heart. And there's a powerful movie, Once Were Warriors. At the very end end of the film, it says, our people once were so warriors, people of mana, people of integrity. People of mana will understand. And when you make that difficult, difficult choice, when you in that lonely kind of a space, you'll experience a freedom. Something in you will kind of grow. You will have a sense of being more authentically you and what often happens then you go to an even greater leadership space you become a chief a real chief people around you go wow i want to be with him her i i I want to follow them there is something the great people of history gandhi mandela abraham lincoln so many were people who made really difficult calls lonely calls in my own case, Greg, almost immediately upon me doing what I've just said, the voice of self-doubt comes in. 
almost immediately. I think, did I make the right call? Because when you make that call, it's going to actually cost. It could cost you from a money point of view. It could cost you a role. It could cost you a relationship. There will be a cost and there will be doubts. There'll be a pushback time. Get yourself ready for that. Like recently when I had to make a really difficult call, I actually wrote down into my journal, I'm making this call in a really good space, but I actually wrote down, but I know in a week's time I'll be second guessing. Mm. And sure enough, in a week's time, I was second guessing. But when I went into that um, space of awareness, I knew I'd made the right call. Mm. Price, he said something there which I think is absolutely critical to this, which is the freedom you do feel like when you become truly authentic to your values and you walk in that, you know there's a truth to it, there's a wisdom to it, which is irrefutable. Mm. And when you then sign up for that and live it and you're strong and courageous in it, you feel lighter, but you're actually you become quite magnetic. Mm. People are drawn to that, even if, even if they find it in that moment that, you know, they think you're giving giving up on something. They know deep down that you're one leading them true path. Oh yeah. You know, and I think that's 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 true. Being a chief, that is what the inner chief is all about. Yeah. So, Greg, Greg, I, I, I'm, I'm aware that it's a really old film, but we all remember the film um, Dead Poets. And in the poet, Dead Poets film, that final scene when the uh, teacher, Mr. Keaton's leaving the classroom. Now, he's made a few really difficult calls. But as he leaves the classroom at the very end, young Todd stands on the desk and says, Oh, Captain, my a captain. And then what I love about that film is over the next minute, about another six or seven get up on their, on their desks and say it. But not everyone does. And, and it makes it makes it real. Now, your life and mine is not a Hollywood film. When I am authentic and see the dignity of every human being, I haven't got an orchestra playing. When, when I do that, I haven't got people going, oh, <laughs> Captain, my a Captain. But something inside me says, yes. And that yes to my deepest, most authentic me liberates me. Pricey, that is why you're our spiritual guru. Thanks, Gregor. Mate, absolute pleasure to have you on The Inner Chief one more time, and I hope you have a very Merry Christmas. Thanks, Greg. Righto, Chiefs. That sums it up for this week. All the show notes can be found at chiefmaker.com forward slash 152. Now, Chief, if you're yet to rate the episode and subscribe, I hope you'll do so soon. It helps others see the magnificent value that the Chiefs and gurus on the show bring to their life and career. So make sure you hit subscribe on your podcast app now. Give it a five-star rating if you think it's worthy and leave a short review about your favorite episode. Now, Chief, are you working your tail off doing everything you can to be the best professional, but still finding perhaps you're not getting in front and you just don't know why? You're not sure if it's a relationship with your boss that's costing you, maybe your routines and your processes, maybe you don't have the right network or the right skills. Maybe you don't have the right track record, whatever it is. Sometimes it's hard to know what exactly might be costing you a promotion. So what I've done is created the Chief Maker Career Scorecard. It's a 25 question survey that gives you a free automated report about your precise situation. It'll tell you exactly what you need to do in order to get ahead and design a roadmap for your dream job and life. As I said, it's totally free. I've automated the whole process so anybody can go and do it. Just go to chiefmaker.com.au and at the top, click Career Scorecard. Righto, Chief. That sums it up for this week. As always, remember to stay epic.